Hey everybody, uh, we're looking at the basics of marketing today, going through uh, seven key points here. Um, so these are ones you want to take notes on. Uh, this is lesson 1.3, um, so we're already three lessons in here, plus our vocab, looking at doing a test next week. So what is marketing? We've talked about this already. Marketing, uh, the market itself is a group of customers who share a common want or need. That's just a very, very general, basic term. Um, you did that in your terminology as well. Um, so it's anybody, really, who shares a common want or a common need. Marketing itself is the process of creating, promoting, and presenting the product, idea, or service to meet the needs and wants of that market. And then marketing really involves numerous things, studying what people want, designing product packaging, creating a marketing campaign, so much more than that as well. So there's lots of different things that relate to marketing itself. So we're going to talk about a few of those today. So the function of marketing, um, there's seven of them. So if you want to check these down, make sure you understand them. Uh, the first function of marketing is distribution. So how do we get the product from where it's created to the, the actual customers? Now that can be, again, goods or services or even ideas. But in, this, in our case, mostly we're talking about goods and services. So what are some ways this could happen? How can you get your product from your warehouse where you manufacture it or another country where it's manufactured to your customers itself? So generally speaking, very basically, uh, there's lots of different ways. Shipping um, through truck is one of them, um, semi-truck. Um, oftentimes, uh, many of our goods and services are made in China, shipped over in enormous crates and um, brought to um, brought to where the customers are through train and, and trucking. And then, of course, there is, uh, there's the air travel as well. And a lot of cargo planes, most of the flights that happen around the world are cargo, cargo flights. Second um, function of marketing is financing. So uh, we know how we're going to get our product to where we need to get it to, but how do we actually go about securing money so that I can um, create the product that I want to create? So the way to get money is necessary for setting up and running a business. It also includes protecting your investments through risk management, making sure that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So what are some different ways that you could secure capital to get your business up and running? There's lots of different ways that you can get money in order to um, get your product created. Um, one of those might be through just the traditional means of, of banking, business banking. We'll look at that a little bit later in the assignment today. Um, could be uh, you can get investors to come in with you and that, sometimes that's done um, through investment clubs or those sorts of things where you can get people interested in your product and they will invest a certain amount of money for a guaranteed um, income back, uh, uh, interest rates. And of course there's always grandpa and grandma, they're always helpful and parents it can sometimes give you the seed money in order to get your business up and running. The third function of marketing that we're going to look at is called marketing information management. How do I know what my, my clients are going to want? How do I know what is out there? And how do I know where I'm going to go as far as, as pricing even? So it's gathering information about your customers, about the trends that are out there in the world, and, and about also your competitors' products. If you understand how your competitors work and what they're selling things for, it's a lot easier to figure out what your pricing and, and your product should look like. Uh, it's also making informed decisions and it requires good research and development. And the better research you have and the more you know about the market, uh, the better equipped you're going to be to actually meet the needs and wants of people around you. Pricing is the fourth piece now. Pricing has to do with really deciding what it's going to be costing to give uh, people your product. Um, pricing is really important because if you price it too high, you're not going to get um, the flow that you want of your product. If you price it too low, uh, you'll lose your shirt in the process. You can't just um, um, expect that you can do a lot of uh, bulk sales. So there's lots of different companies out there that do different things like this. Now, your high-end pricing really deals with, with companies like, uh, you know them, all the Gucci's and uh, um, uh, all those sorts of companies that really price their product very high. It's high quality, but it's probably not worth the money that is spent on it. Um, but it, you're paying for a name. And they keep their prices high because they want to have that, that influence on the market that looks like they're really um, the top end piece. And, and that's the one that everybody wants. Then you have the other side of the market, that, like the Walmarts of the world, that will price their product as low as possible. And so they only make a few cents on each product. But their desire is to sell so many products that they make so much money because it's not the prices 
that they make money off of. It's the actual bulk of the sale itself. The fifth piece is a product service management. So how do you obtain and develop, maintain, improve a product or a product mix in response to the market opportunities? As the market changes, you need to be changing with it. Uh, one example of this might be um, smart. Smart boards were the original uh, interactive whiteboard out there. And they were so cutting edge that uh, Calgary Academy even got them when they first came out. And one of the first schools in Canada to have smart boards was, was CA. Um, we have them still and they've gone through lots of changes, but they're finding in the, in the marketplace today that smart is kind of almost falling behind. They haven't necessarily put as much research and development into some of their tools as some of the newer companies coming out now. So smart used to be in the lead on this piece. I think in the next few years, you're going to find them falling behind and other tools. And I just pulled a couple pictures off the web of different products that are out there now with regards to interactive whiteboards. Very important piece for teachers. But if smart can't offer um, some of the pieces that, that is needed out there, um, you're going to find that changing very quickly, rapidly in the future here. And promotion, any effort to inform, persuade, or remind the customer about a business product or services. This can be um, as simple as a sign on the lawn, um, promoting your business to um, huge billboards, uh, television advertisements, all those sorts of things, different promotions. Now, promotion is also an effort, not just to say, here's my product, but hey, if you buy my product now, you'll get a little certain price off, or you'll get this gift in, in return. And that promotion piece, you're promoting a product, but you're also trying to bring the customer in. And sometimes when you when, uh, when we're looking at the functions of the market, we talk about not only the pricing and, and the distribution, but also the selling of the product. How to provide customers with good and service so that they choose to buy it. The relationship marketing is another piece that uh, you'll hear a little bit about those two words. Relationship marketing is when companies really try to build a relationship with you. They're not just trying to sell you one piece. They're trying to sell you relationships so that you come back over and over again. And one simple example of that would be um, app, Apple, sorry. And that would be the iPhone. Their picture of the iPhone 1 on the left and the iPhone 5 on the right. Um, what they're trying to do is maintain a relationship with you so that you keep coming back and buying iPhones. And they find that, you know, people that buy the iPhone 5 probably had a 4 and a 3 and a 2 before it. And if you can maintain that relationship piece, you'll know that you have a secure future for your business. Now, some of the problems with that is if you don't keep on the cutting edge and you're not able to really um, make sure that your customers are getting the best of what the best is out there, other companies are going to slip in there. We talked about Smart before. Now you have Nokia, you have Samsung, you have all these other phones that are out there that are really vying for the same customers that are using iP um, iPhones as well. So there's lots more um, questions around Apple's future because of this. Now that Steve Jobs has passed away and, and, and things seem to be staling a little bit in Apple. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there with them over the next few years and uh, what happens with the, co with the competition out there as well. So that's seven functions of marketing. Um, I want you to make sure you know all those functions um, and make sure you know them well so that you are able to answer some questions on a test that will be on Haiku um, next week. So the first test will be next week, so make sure you know your stuff from all the lessons, not just this one, but your first three, and another one will be coming out before that test, and also um, your vocabulary. Today's uh, piece that I would like you to look at is a little bit of research, and all it, all it needs is you for you to go to the Business Development Bank of Canada website. BDC is what their um, short name is. I want you to do some research and find out some answers to the following questions, and those questions can be answered all over the site, but probably if you go to the About uh, section, learn a little bit more about the company, and look through some of the frequently asked questions, you'll find a bunch of these answers. So what is Business Development Bank of Canada? What's their mission and vision? How does it operate and who can use this resource? And how does the Business Development Bank of Canada differ from other regular financial organizations like Royal Bank or TD? What is one interesting thing you've learned about the BDC? And then on the front page, I think the home page, they have a free ebook on marketing. And they also have a business plan template that we're going to actually use in our course a little bit later on down the road. So maybe download those two things, stick them on your computer somewhere or in Haiku, and we will uh, come back to those eventually as well. Um, so that's it for today. Thanks for your attention. Um, flip back through that when you're studying next week, and uh, we'll have our first quiz then. Thanks, everybody.